back to our panelists. Our next question comes from Gene Covison or Nathan Fletcher. Gene. Given the delays and uncertainties that surround the Charger Stadium project in East Village, where would that project rank on your list of priorities as mayor? And do you see the plan that UT San Diego proposed for the 10th Avenue or the terminal site as a non-starter? Yeah, well, the first thing we've got to do as mayor, if you live in a neighborhood that, that doesn't have street lights, that has potholes, that has crumbling infrastructure, you don't understand the conversation about a state. Because the city hasn't been delivering its basic services. And so the first thing we have to do is restore that level of confidence with all of the city that their services and needs will be addressed and taken care of. The second thing we have to do is put forward a proposal that benefits the entire city and doesn't cost city general fund dollar money. As it relates to the proposal that's been put, put forward to shut down our port, I think it goes in completely the wrong direction. I put out a port plan that talks about growing our exports. Specifically, we call for a 33% increase in the dollar amount we export. That's $5 billion in new exports. We do it by increasing short sea shipping. We do it by understanding we're one of 17 strategic ports. We do it by a real investment in communicating to our businesses the value of the port. I want to see those jobs and those commerce grow, not shrink. And so as mayor, I'll take us in a different direction, and that would be growing the port, increasing the number of good-paying local jobs that we have there, and making a real commitment to our economy. Mr. Phil, you're up next, sir. You have 30 seconds. Well, I'm glad Nathan has adopted my central part of my economic development plan, that is expansion of the port. And, uh, and the answer to the second part, Gene, is uh, the uh, editor of my favorite newspaper, Gene Tribune's uh, idea is a non-start. Yes. Uh, but I say, and I think I'm the only one who says convincingly, that uh, no public money for a new charter stadium. We have a billionaire owner of a team that makes hundreds of millions of dollars. They want a billion dollars in the city. I say no public funds. Now, Carl's going to say that, but he already voted for $150 million to deal with the site. So uh, I say no public funds for the charter. Well, speaking of the Ford Bob, when you ran for election, you talked about the port, and you said that there was no commerce, and that you were going to bring it, and you were going to make it a niche market. Well, it turns out there is $5 billion worth of trade going on, and we are a niche market. you got to get your head in the game, Bob. You're not running in the 1970s. And <laughs> The Chargers, uh, I want to keep them here. I'll do my best to keep them here, but not at taxpayer expense. We've got a lot more to do to get our streets repaired, our economics uh, in line, and get jobs started here in the city. Mr. Manister, time is up. Mr. Filler, I will give you 30 seconds here, sir. You know, Bobby picks out one person each, each of the debate to go after, and I guess it's, it's my turn today. Uh, it's usually the person ahead of the poll, so I uh, thank you. But, you know, uh, my favorite president, Ronald Reagan, once said that uh, uh, I will not hold the youth and inexperience of my opponents against them. <laughs> All right, let's break this back around. Let's move on to Mr. Demias, sir. You have 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, I do not support public funding for a new charter stadium. We have to get our roads fixed first and our services restored. And people say, well, how in the world can we keep the chargers here if there's not going to be any public funding, if you're just relying on private investment? You know, they said the same thing when I said I'm going to solve the pension crisis. But what we did was we brought a team of experts to the table, a national team, and now we have Proposition B, which will put our pension crisis in the past and allow us to move forward. Uh, right now, I'm working with an expert team on coming up with a private model to invest in a stadium to get public-private partnerships to do uh, that project without a public uh, investment whatsoever from taxpayers. Mr. your time is up. Mr. Fletcher, we will end with you 30 seconds, sir. Yeah, I mean, we have a huge opportunity here. When you pick a mayor, uh, you aren't just picking a position on a series of issues. Uh, you're picking a leader who can do things like this, who can revitalize the port, but have that be a part of a broader conversation. We put out plans for how we rebuild our manufacturing sector, how we rebuild our technology sector, how we create those good paying local jobs. And ultimately, a mayor's got to have an overall economic vision. We laid out a comprehensive plan with specific metrics, 130,000 new jobs, increase in patents, increase in venture capital, increase in dollar amount we export. But one of the most important ones is a rise in the median income in the port plays a critical component in reaching all of those. Mr. Fletcher, your time is up. Okay.